Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic simple classification of substances and we are going to be looking at the subtopic uh, criteria of purity. Previously we discussed on the effect of impurities on melting points and we said that impurities lower the melting point of substances and today we are going to focus on effects of impurities on boiling points, and then we are going to make a conclusion on that. So in this lesson, we are first going to look at the uh, discussion on how impurities affect boiling points of different compounds. And then we're also going to relate that to some of the applications and also look at some questions in regards to what you have been discussing. We are also going to make a conclusion on how we can test uh, for a pure substance. Uh, if you're given a pure substance, how can you be able to know that it is pure? Uh, so first of all, uh, impurities usually raise the boiling points of substances. And for impure substance, they do not have a sharp boiling point. So this is quite different from what you had discussed previously with uh, melting point, we had said that the melting point is lowered by impurities, but in this case, the boiling point is increased. So if you are looking at an example of pure water, we know pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. However, if we were to add uh, impurities, let's say, for example, salt in this solution, uh, the salt would increase the boiling point. You notice that um, that water is going to boil at temperatures above 100 degrees Celsius. And the, 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 the water is going to boil also uh, over a range of temperatures. Even if the boiling point is being raised above 100 degrees Celsius, it is not constant. We cannot say that it has a constant uh, boiling point. It does so over a range of temperatures. So the curve uh, is showing for pure water and impure water. You can see for pure water, it's very straight. There is a constant uh, boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. It's very sharp. But if you look at the graph of an impure water, you notice that when it gets to 100 degrees Celsius, it's, con it's not constant or sharp as the case of pure substance, but it continues to rise and it doesn't rise in a constant manner. It just increases steadily over a range of temperatures. So if you were to compare these two uh, graphs, you can see the difference between the sharp boiling point on the pure water and the range of temperatures on the impure water. So if we wanted to test, for example, for a pure substance, if it's pure or not, the most advisable thing is to use melting point and boiling point to test. That is what is referred to as the criteria of purity. So we say that pure substance, they boil or melt at constant temperatures, but if they have like impurities, they are going to boil and melt over a range of temperatures. You will see the big difference in the graphs, uh, even in their data when uh, the graphs are drawn. So melting point and boiling point are used to determine purity of substance. That is what we refer to as the criteria of purity. We also mentioned some of the applications would uh, be, uh, for example, in temperate regions where there is ice, uh, salt is used to uh, melt the, the ice faster. And also we talked about also dry cleaning and we know uh, that this uses a lot of temperature in the, in the cleaning of hot water. So for the melting point and the boiling point, they're usually used to determine if substances are pure or not. So let's look at a few questions to clarify what you have been discussing. So the diagram below shows a heating curve of water. It's a heating curve of water in the laboratory. You can see the heating curve. We have the, the x-axis with time and the y-axis with temperatures. And the curve was drawn uh, according to the data that was collected. And if you look at the boiling points of water, we say it's usually 100 degrees Celsius at sea level. But if you look at this graph, there are two uh, temperatures on the boiling point, and you can see the curve is not uh, sharp as you would have seen for sharp uh, 
for a pure substance. So this also helps us to make a conclusion even before we start answering the question. This is how it would have looked like if we were hoping to get uh, for a sharp, for a sharp uh, curve or for a pure substance. So the first question is at what temperature does the water boil? So the temperature the temperature at which this water boils is not going to be a at 100 degrees Celsius as in the case of a pure substance. It's going to start boiling at 110 uh, degrees Celsius. So this is for the impure substances. So we said that uh, this curve, uh, this uh, water will, is going to boil at 110 uh, degrees Celsius. And we said that you can see that normal water would boil, which is pure at 100 degrees Celsius, but you can see it starts boiling at 110 degrees Celsius. Next question is, give reasons, uh, giving reasons, is this pure or impure water? So we said it is going to be impure. Uh, the reason why it is impure is because we said it does not have sharp boiling points. So it doesn't have sharp boiling points. Does not have sharp boiling points. That's the main reason. And you can see it's not sharp. This region is supposed to be like this, and this region, region also is supposed to be like this. You can go ahead and uh, talk about uh, the boiling point or the melting point, but in this case, we'd like you to mention about the, the boiling point because you are starting with uh, liquid. Uh, next question, state the effects of impurities on the boiling on point of water. So as you can see from the diagram, the boiling point uh, increases. So we say that the impurities increases the boiling point of water. So let's look at another one more question. Uh, two samples of a similar substance from different containers were investigated. The curve below. Uh, represents the variation of temperatures with time when heated separately. So we can see curve one and we can see curve two and you can see their differences when they are heated separately on this uh, graph. So the first question is explain the variation in the curves. So we have sample one and sample two. So the first thing we have to look at sample one and see what's the difference between the two. When you look at sample one, which is this curve, you notice that it doesn't have uh, any sharp uh, boiling point or melting point. So there are no sharp boiling point uh, and melting point, unlike the other one. When you look at curve two, you can see it has sharp from the curve, sharp boiling point and melting point. And uh, you can see that when, when you look at the two curves, uh, when uh, you look at curve one, when you look at the melting point, it doesn't have a specific melting point. It's melts over a range of temperatures, unlike for curve two, where you can see the constant melting point and the constant boiling point, you cannot be able to see that in curve two. And then uh, the next question is, common salt is sprinkled on the roads during winter in temperate countries. I will need to explain this. So common salt is sprinkled and it interferes with the structure of the ice. We said ice is in solid state, so it is, its uh, particles are fixed in uh, they are in fixed position. So when you add salt, the salt uh, comes in between the particles and interferes with the structure of the particles. This causes the forces of attraction to be weakened between the particles and then it makes the ice to melt. So the ice melts. So it can melt at a lower temperature uh, than the normal. So salt lowers the melting point. So we can say it lowers the melting point. Of ice. So that is uh, the application of uh, effects of impurities on both boiling points and melting points of substances. So
So this brings us to the end uh, of this discussion. Uh, you can watch out for the next video as we're going to continue on temporary and physical changes. See you then.